it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you this session. It's uh, called Improving Team Communication Through Balancing Discussions. And very pleased to uh, present to you um, FTC uh, 15534 Vertex, um, who are going to present uh, this evening. Uh, Vertex is a four-year FTC team from Exeter, New Hampshire, based in Phillips Exeter Academy and comprised of diverse individuals from all over the world and country. As a school, Phillips Exeter Academy uses discussion-based Harkness learning. The te techniques used in this way of learning have been incorporated into many aspects of how Vertex, Vertex functions as a team. And as such, they are excited to share the lessons they have learned over the years. FTC 15534 is a two-time recipient of the New Hampshire Inspire Award and won first in robot performance in the 2020-21 season. So uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Ria, Isabella, and Celine from 15534. Yeah, so we're FTC team 1553 for Vertex. And as um, Phil already introduced us, we are a four year team um, for First Tech Challenge FTC in New Hampshire in the United States. My name is Isabella Vesley. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I'm a junior at Phillips Exeter Academy. My name is Ria Tiaki. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I'm a sophomore at Phillips Exeter Academy. Um, my name is Celine. I use they, she pronouns, and I'm a senior at Phillips Exeter Academy. And the three of us, we're all in the outreach subgroup and we'll be presenting about discussions um, tonight. So we wanted to start off with a bit of an activity um, to Kahoot to start our discussions before we start getting into more concrete um, presentation. So um, I'm just going to share my screen for that. How it works is you can join Kahoot.it and you can play along. So there are going to be questions, kind of a trivia game that we made um, let me just unmute it. Yes, so if you go to kahoot.it or the Kahoot app, you can participate with this game pin. Okay, I'm not sure if we'll have three or two players, so I don't know. Okay. Okay, cool. So I think we can get started now. So, yeah. <laughs> so first question will show up on your screen. Just to start off, we wanted to introduce ourselves once more. We are a four-year FTC team, and um, one of our passions is to help our community in anything that has to do with robotics, so whether that be mechanical or programming or speaking or anything in between, um, that's what we're here for. So moving on to more discussion-based um, related to our presentation. So we just wanted to start off um, to make it comfortable. If you are scared of discussion or public speaking, that is completely okay. Because in fact, it is one of the most common fears that people all around the world have, no matter what they're presenting about or what they're talking about. And social phobia doesn't just include presenting, it also includes discussions with others, um, whether that be with your teammates or with coaches or when presenting to judges. So that's what we'll be talking about today. 
So let's take a look. Oh, lots of movement in our leaderboard. Let's keep going. Great. So um, I see a range of answers here. Um, when sharing ideas, one important thing is body language. So we're going to talk a little bit more about implicit communication and body language later on today. Um, but that is incredibly important when we're sh sharing our ideas or anything when we have to discuss or present. Um, we're speaking quickly to fit in all of our ideas. That's, some, um, that's not very important because when you speak quickly, it's more difficult to understand um, the concepts they're trying to get across. Same thing for small and plain black text. That's not really very helpful to your to your viewers either. Yeah. yeah this is something yeah, you so, definitely. Should, oh, I can go. Sorry. You, go ahead. I don't know. This is something you should definitely not be doing. It's okay to be nervous, and sometimes you can stare at the clock, but. Try to avoid looking at one person in particular because that kind of makes the rest of the group feel uncomfortable and also doesn't really help get your message across. Great. Let's keep going. Yeah, do you want to take this one? Sure. So using words like uh, um, or like, or you know, those things, instead of using filler words, you can often just pause. Instead of having to say like, you can just pause. And often silence is very valuable. If on the other hand, it's an important word that can really express some ideas. Great. Let's keep going. Doing pretty well. So reading off of notes shows a lack of. So Great. A bit of a trick question. Uh, yeah. Lack of self-doubt, I guess that means having lots of confidence, which is um, what reading off notes doesn't show. If you prepare, you won't really have to read off your notes directly. You can often, um, speak and you know, internalize things and then speak them to the audience instead of having to read from slides. Yeah, exactly. So let's keep going. I think the poop went away from your screen. Oh, is it? Did it just disappear completely? Yeah, this the okay. back is very cool though. So sorry, okay. let me just reshare. <laughs> sorry about that. I think that was a okay. Should be back. Okay, great. I think that works now. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was a glitch. Right. Okay. So let's keep going. Yeah, so um, just to recap this one, it's really important so everyone can bring something to the table. So new ideas and everyone has something a little different to say, and that's something important so that we can have a better discussion and better results as a team. So.
Yeah, actually, all of the answers are correct here. Um, these are all great ways to help others use their voice. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this later, but already we can see that helping others use their voice is something that you can control as well, partially. So being prepared and listening to others and being inclusive of other people's ideas and also getting to know everyone on your team, that's all great ways to help everyone feel more included and um, to let everyone speak up. So this one we're going to talk more about again in a little bit. But asking for others' opinions, there's a few different ways. But one thing that's really important is that we're allowing others the chance to speak. So making sure that we're not saying too much ourselves um, while we're asking. So it's okay to put in our own ideas. It is also important to add special, um, make it very clear that you're, uh, you're giving space for others. So asking how others feel um, is a great way to ask for more opinions. Um, yeah, so it seems this one was a little hard for some people. Um, uh, just remember that like opinions are inherently interpreted and that um, you do want to be asking questions that um, like are important to the discussion and like aren't like, you know, obnoxious. Um, and personal questions um, are just generally um, a bit out of bounds for um, um, I guess like in robotics discussions. So um, interpretive questions are pretty important for asking for people's opinions. Okay, I can take this one. Um, yeah, so adding to a point is um, kind of opposite to asking someone else for their opinion. So it's something that you would bring up. Um, adding to a point is a little different than um, disagreeing. So that's why the green one isn't correct. And agreeing, um, saying that you agree is something that's also important to have in a discussion, but specifically we can categorize these different um, exclamations in a discussion into adding um, or disagreeing and um, also just supporting, so. Great. Yeah, so consensus is something that you tend to want to reach at the end of a discussion. It's okay to disagree throughout, but when we're on a team, for, for example, on an FLL team, it's important to have some direction to go at the end. Um, and that direction has to be pretty consistent across your team. So um, a consensus is what happens when the group agrees on something and is going in the same direction.
Um, I can take this one. So if you look, neither yellow, blue, or green are good things per se. We don't want people to shut down. We don't want people to become further apart or argue. Instead, constructive conflict is a conflict in which none of these things happen. And instead, people are able to build upon their ideas and learn. All right, we're nearing the end. We have five more questions. Let's see how they go. So the reason why we have these questions, even though they might seem a little more obvious, is because being able to have very specific and very clear ways to express yourself in a discussion is extremely important. So being able to make it clear that you agree with someone um, is not only supportive to the person, but also helps the entire discussion flow better because everyone is on the same page. So that's why we have these questions and it's important to know um, how to express your opinion. So if you agree with someone, it's good to say that you agree with them. That way the whole team knows um, how we're feeling as a group. So for clarification, um, it's important to like, once again, communicate properly and clearly. And things like, yes, I was about to mention that are instead a little bit insensitive. And this does include is um, not very clear. And same with a classic example of this. Let's put it another way. It's kind of something that can help direct the entire conversation and make sure that everyone's on the same page. Exactly. So in addition to completely agreeing with someone, as we saw two questions ago, it's also important to be able to counter a point politely because countering points helps bring new ideas to the table and helps strengthen already existing ideas because you can put together some of the benefits and costs of multiple ideas. And it's also important to do it politely. So that way you're still on good terms with everyone. So um, yeah, it's good to voice those opinions. Um, yeah, all of these are relatively good ways to counter them, but the green one is one of the best ways to acknowledge the other person's ideas. Yeah, body language can be a very useful tool, just not when it's used incorrectly. So um, things like standing up straight is very good because that shows confidence, but rocking back and forth often doesn't. And hands in your pockets um, shows lack of preparation as well as like fidgeting is not helpful either. Also, it's, it's important to be excited and, and cheerful because if, your audience, if you're excited, your audience will be. Yeah, and we understand that can be more difficult over virtual settings like Zoom, but we'll address that as well. Smiles are always very helpful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
Isabel, do you want to take this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so um, similar to the last question, these are examples of good body language. So that can include having a strong and solid open stance, having good eye contact with everyone. As we saw earlier, it's good to have eye contact with many people um, and also using hands for emphasis, but it's also not great to have constant moving. So fidgeting can be distracting from what you're speaking about. Final question. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yay, sir. Okay. One. <laughs> nice. Good work, everyone. Congrats. Hopefully that was a bit fun, but also a good introduction to what we'll be speaking about soon, which is um, going to be more concrete. So let's move on to that. Oh, right. Yeah, so um, we're gonna just start off by um, reviewing some of the concepts from Marcus's and just talking about generally what is good communication. Um, so um, the goal of good communication in our presentation today is to um, give you some insight into how to have good and constructive con discussions. So um, some examples of traits of good discussions are that they're engaging, that they're informative, concise, organized, and fun. Um, I think, especially in robotics, we all want to have a little bit of fun, but we also don't want to get bored if people don't come to discussions without proper pre preparation and don't know what they're going to contribute. Um, so as mentioned before, um, you really want to go into discussions with the plan. Um, if you're a participant or if you're a facilitator of a competent, um, discussion. So, um, it's really helpful to brainstorm in advance and maybe even write down a couple questions and a couple of points you want to bring up. Um, it's important to come to discussions with an open mind so that you trust, respect, and are honest with the people you're discussing with. Um, and there are also a couple tools that can help you monitor your discussions and make sure that you have a balanced and equitable discussion. So for example, there is the tool, the tr tool Trello, which um, helps you with project man management and equity maps, which helps you map who's speaking and um, who's speaking when and for how long people are speaking. And then at the end, it gives you a score um, on how equitable your um, discussion was. And it's really important to keep in mind that discussions don't have to be perfectly balanced. Um, some people think that for a discussion to be equal or balanced, everyone needs to speak the exact same amount of times but that's not necessarily true. Um, some students just have um, the ability to be more active than others. Um, some students can ask more questions while some might answer more questions and every single level of participation is okay. Um, the most important thing is that no one, um, is that no one feels scared to contribute when they want to and that um, no one is speaking over another person. So how can you help students and your friends who might be struggling in conversations? Um, one thing that is a really big step is to stand up when people aren't being heard. This requires that you are like really aware of um, who's speaking and who wants to speak and maybe like people who, who like lean forward and start to speak but are interrupted. Um, and it's important to stand up and call out, call this out when this happens and make sure that everyone says um, what they want to say. 
Um, you could also talk to students individually, um, meet on them, meet with them one on one, and give encouragement. Talk about how they think they're doing and um, points that they wanted to bring up and might not be able to. Do. And um, just like a couple words of encouragement could go a long way. Um, and it's really important just to think about inclusion in your discussions and think about how different identities can influence um, students' confidence in discussions. For example, especially because this is robotics and this is a STEM field, um, female students might have a tougher time feeling like their um, ideas are important and heard. And um, it's just really important to keep that in mind when talking to students. Great, I'm just going to stop sharing and share once more. I think I've been told that um, there is a, some problem with my screen sharing. So I'll try one more time. Um, let's see, is that a little better? I'm not quite sure what the problem was, but... Um, is it? <laughs> okay, well then we'll just keep going. So as you saw in the Kahoot, we did talk a little bit about body language and um, implicit communication. Okay, yeah, I'm not quite sure why there's gray rectangles on the screen because they're not at, I don't have anything on my screen. Oh, would you like me to share my screen? Yeah, maybe you okay, could. We'll do that. Okay. Sorry, Zoom is not working with us today. That's okay. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Does it, does it look normal? Yeah, it does. I don't know. What happened to me has never happened to me before, so I, I have no idea. OK, <laughs> uh, Okay, let's go. And we'll keep going. So regarding body language, this is something that's often talked about when we're talking about presentations and speaking to judges and uh, maybe to other teams. But it's just as important when you're talking to people in your own team. So we're going to go over some important body language tips and um, the importance of that. Great. Um, okay, yeah, maybe you can go back just by one. Um, just to preface, um, preface this entire section. Um, sometimes it's okay to not speak the whole time. So as we talked a little bit about before, discussion does not have to be fully balanced. It doesn't have to be speaking every single second. Um, so whether this is silence in your own speaking, taking pauses between your points, and also it's good to have constructive silence when you're thinking of during a discussion. So body language. Body language has a lot of different parts, starting with posture. So posture can be whether you're sitting at the table or standing with it for a presentation or standing with your team. All of that needs to have good attentive posture. So posture that is making others know that you are present, even if you're physically present. Um, yeah, so we, we will be able to send the slides um, after this. Um, we can, I'm not quite sure how the communication will work through FLL Canada, but also we are, this is being a recorded session and also we can email it to you. So if you email it to us, we'll give you a contact information at the end. Um, but yes, yeah, so posture is incredibly important. So that could mean if you're sitting at the table to not, um, not be on, on the side or um, being present, sitting up straight or standing up tall. These are all great ways to show that you are present and with the team. And with that comes moving with a purpose. So it's okay to move a little bit, for example, hand gestures and moving. Nobody likes to stand completely straight, but it's also good to not be fidgeting constantly because it shows that you're listening. So it can be a little difficult, but that's something to work on. Eye contact also helps show um, that you're fully present in the discussion. So looking at the person who is speaking makes not only them feel more included and um, listened to, it also helps you focus um, on the conversation. Hand gestures are great to bring others into the conversation and um, help gesture as well as um, if it adds to your own point. And same with facial expressions, it makes it more interesting. Adding smells is always great, um, especially at working as a team. And then dressing for the occasion, this, um, this is probably less important than the other body language tips, but it is still quite important to show that you are ready for a conversation. So this might be more applicable if speaking 
with other people outside of your team who don't know you as well because dressing for the occasion helps give a first impression. A first impression. First impression. Yes, first and also then you can be first. <laughs> okay, regarding your voice. Your voice is arguably the most important part out of your entire body language, especially right now if we're being virtual, you can't really see us. You can't see maybe all the hand gestures we're doing or the solid um, posture, right? So your voice is incredibly important. Coming with your voice comes is important on um, the projection and articulation. So making sure that everyone is able to hear your points very clearly and articulation is not only your pronunciation of the words, but also being able to articulate your points clearly. Since when we're working on a team for robotics, there's a lot of different ideas coming to play and being able to suggest, suggest different ones and very clearly understand, um, that's really important. Filler words are also great to make sure everyone can be focused. Yeah. And then other ways to vary your voice in addition to tone is to speak faster and slower. Again, this is to make other people understand and stay more attentive to your conversation. And again, silence and breathing is really important. You can be a little stressed during discussions and you can also not have know everything to say. So silence and being able to breathe between points is important to help everyone stay grounded in the conversation. Yeah, so we've talked about some general communication discussion skills. Let's apply them to a team environment right now. So first for a general quote from Babe Ruth, you may have the greatest bunch of individual stars, but if they don't play together, the team won't be worth a dime. And that's equally as true for robotics as it is for baseball. So the first part, the first thing that's important is to establish common goals between team members. This starts with mindset. That's having a common and positive mindset. An example is let's work together to design and build a wonderful robot. That's positive and it's something that each of the team members can individually work towards and basically contribute to the growth of the entire team. Another thing that's really helpful in establishing common goals is to put down the ideas in writing. It's honestly much easier to share and communicate when things are written than just spoken oftentimes. And finally, one thing you can also do is create a spreadsheet. Um, that's something we implement in our team as well. We create a team spreadsheet so everyone knows what the tasks are after a meeting and in a meeting and who's assigned to them. It really helps to build team transparency and make sure everyone stays on the same page, which is really, really important when you're working on a team. Uh, the next part is to respect all voices and people. We've touched upon this previously, but each voice is unique and important. And that's really, those differences are really what create a, a strong team. But to do that, you really have to listen to other people's ideas. Think about the meaning and thought behind them rather than just the words they're saying. And also slow down. Everyone's brain moves and thinks differently, so it's crucial that everyone on the team has a chance to help out in the robot, to understand what's going on. And uh, talking and designing, honestly, are just as important, if not more than building. So make sure that everyone's thinking on the same page and everyone is together. Also, avoid negativity. You can always turn a negative thought positive. We, we discussed it a little bit in the coop, but instead of saying something like your idea is terrible, you can try interesting. I approach this differently and that works more effectively. And additionally, you need to trust, to respect people, you need to trust them to believe in their capabilities and their work. You know, give people multiple chances if they make mistakes. We're, we're all human at the end of the day. So all of the above will really help build an open team environment, which is the environment where everyone feels they can share their ideas and thoughts. This is really the environment and the goal of a successful team. Finally, have fun. A uh, fun team is a happy team, is a successful team. Have fun in your conversations and discussions as well. So we wanted to end with a little bit of a practical example. So uh, a little bit about applying communication skills. Uh, here's, our, here's our quote for this section. Good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. This is true in all sorts of settings, whether that's robotics or the workforce or the classroom, everywhere. So I wanted to do a practical example. If you um, have some, we don't have too much time, but if you have a piece of paper and a pencil near you, just try to bring that out, uh, take a moment to grab it. We have a drawing. So basically what we've done is we've created out a drawing and we want you to follow this, the descriptions of the next two slides and try to draw this on your own piece of paper. So here's our weak example. Draw a white hexagon. You can draw along with me if you have something nearby. Draw a white hexagon and then five red triangles inside it and a blue circle with a star inside the triangles. Everything should have a black border. I'll give you guys just a minute to draw that.
Awesome. So now we'll move on to our strong example. You can see this is definitely more detailed and there's more thought put into this. So another thing that's really helpful is this is broken down into steps. So it's not as confusing, just one large blob of text. So first thing, draw a regular hexagon with a black border. Ensure that one of its vertexes is pointing straight up. And next, at the center of the hexagon, draw a blue circle, um, approximately one fourth the size of the hexagon. Then draw a green star inside the circle. And finally, draw six red equilateral triangles, each with one side tangent to the circle and one vertex at the center of the closest hexagon side. So you can see here, we definitely use a lot more technical terms. Um, we're more exact with our measurements, like one fourth the size of the hexagon rather than just a circle. Uh, also use like terms like vertex or equilateral to describe shapes. So this is definitely going to be more helpful and you'll see we have some examples of drawings. We actually tried this out with some students on our campus um, on the next slide. Awesome. So here are our examples. Um, take a look at the strong and weak communication ones. You can see from the weak communication, there definitely were some interesting results. Some people drew a weirdly shaped hexagon. Most people drew five triangles and then stars inside them individually. And then with a strong communication one, you can see that the drawing is much more exact. It's still not perfect. Communication will never be perfect. But we can see that each person now has the same goal in mind. Both descriptions represent our goal, but one is clearly better at communicating this goal with other. In a team setting, it's really crucial for everyone to have the same goals in mind, something we really want to end with and emphasize. That's why strong communication is super important. So thank you all so much. Are there any questions? Uh, feel free to put them in the chat or just unmute and speak out loud. You can contact, contact us on Instagram or um, through mail. Yeah, and just to add on regarding um, contact, um, you can email us anytime, whether that is about this presentation, so about slides and about tips for discussion, but we'd also completely be open to mentoring and giving help for FLL teams. So some of us have some experience with FLL, but also just as an FTC team, we think um, we, well, we have quite a bit of experience with running a robotics team. So if there's any questions regarding that, we'd be happy to help. Thanks very much, uh, everyone. Um, if there are any questions, uh, as uh, was indicated, you can uh, put your questions in chat uh, or just unmute yourself uh, at this point and, and ask a question. Um, I, I thought that this was an excellent presentation. Yes, the, uh, uh, the entire presentation, the video will be um, posted on uh, the First Canada website uh, probably later next week. Um, and uh, uh, I know in other sessions, we've had some questions about uh, the material specifically uh, being posted as well. So we'll look into that. But uh, um, uh, as, uh, as was said, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, uh, contact the, uh, the team directly uh, for that um, information. So I, uh, I, I, I was uh, thrilled to, um, to learn uh, all kinds of interesting things about uh, uh, about uh, communication uh, within the team. Um, and uh, uh, I think uh, one of the questions that, that really came to mind, I know you touched on it uh, uh, once or twice as well, um, uh, given that uh, we are uh, in, in the most part still in the virtual world. <laughs> are there any particular tips that are, are, are important um, to remember um, when you're doing presentations via video versus uh, in person. Is there anybody that wants to comment on that? Yeah, sure. So one of the main differences between being online and being in person is that A, you don't have that physical connection, obviously, and B, you also can't see your entire self. So being able to still feel like everyone is together um, can be done through a few ways. First, being able to communicate even outside of regular meeting times. So whether that be through some sort of messaging channel or just a very easy way to stay connected, um, that's incredibly important since that's something that if it's in person, it comes naturally. And once it's online, it's much more difficult. And also being able to have a discussion online is also like oh, over Zoom, it's quite difficult, right? You can't see um, who's ready to talk and what people think. 
So being able to exaggerate those emotions. Um, so when someone is speaking and if you agree, you don't have to necessarily unmute right away, but um, nodding along, agreeing, um, or some over Zoom, for example, their reactions. Um, these can be very helpful in the middle of a discussion to just show your support and um, add on to others. Anything along else? With, <laughs> along with that, so take advantage of Zoom. Zoom does have some things that are like help in communication. Um, like if you're trying to have a fun time, you can make a fun background or add some nice like face filters. So take advantage of those things that you can do. And um, additionally too, one thing that's really always helpful, just a quick actionable tip is smile. Smiling is often the best way to communicate agreement, happiness, you know, spread a positive, positive environment. That's just one of those things that you can still do on Zoom. And it's, it's wonderful that we still have that connection. That's great tips. Yeah. And, and I agree, uh, Ria, that uh, just smiling uh, is so important. I was, uh, uh, I had the pleasure of being a, a judge for the um, at home uh, inspire uh, 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 awards um, last season. And uh, uh, it was interesting that, that certainly the, uh, uh, the teams that, that, um, uh, that just presented there and you could see their smiling faces and that you knew that they were engaged and, uh, uh, and interested in that it, it just really brought the judges into, you know, what they were saying, uh, um, uh, a little bit more, uh, because I think that just that smile, uh, really helps to, uh, to, to make that connection, <laughs> uh, virtually, um, on this uh, on this format, so yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, and I see that you've posted your uh, your contact information in chat. So, um, uh, folks out there, if uh, if you do have any further questions for the for the team, um, and you'd like to get uh, a, a bit more information about uh, you know how they deal with communication, uh, uh, please feel free to contact them uh, uh, through their email or uh, or check out their website there. So um, I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, for this wonderful presentation uh, from FTC 15534. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys their, their evening and uh, we'll say good night and, uh, and looking forward to a, a great season with FIRST. Take care. Uh, sorry. Before I leave, oh, sorry. Um, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Yeah, this is a, a great presentation. I really like it. And um, I'm a coach of IFL team. Uh, next year, I think I'm going to move to FTC. I saw you, you are a FTC team. So I'm going to ask us uh, unrelated the question with today's presentations. So, what are the big difference between FTC and FIL from your perspective? Yeah, so obviously the robot is quite different. So I guess other than the robot, right? Since the robot, um, I guess one of the main things is that FTC um, is just a broader competition. So FLL, almost everything is just Legos. Um, and it's really easy to find the parts, almost always the same type of parts. FTC is a lot more open. So the game has a lot of different ways to score points. Different teams will approach that with a different strategy. So whereas FL normally has a few different challenges, very specific, and you can choose the order, FTC, you can actually just choose what you want to do. So you have robots that can specialize in specific tasks, and your team can choose what those tasks are. And you can also have things like custom parts. So a lot of teams will start using 3D printed parts, custom um, parts from companies, things like that. It's a lot more open. Um, so something that does play into more of an engineering aspect of it um, compared to FLL. And in terms of non-robotics related activities, FTC also places a larger focus on outreach, whereas FLL has a more focus on a project. Um, every year there's, as, as an FLL team, you guys must know, there's kind of a theme for a project. We come up with a solution Whereas FTC doesn't have um, one specific presentation that you give for that for every year. From, for FTC, there's three main parts, the robot, the programming of the robot. And then outside of that, you have community outreach, which is um, anything to do with the community. So that can include giving lessons, giving presentations, giving workshops, giving um, classes, um, mentoring other teams, anything like that, or organizing um, competitions. So for example, we organized a catathon um, 
later this year, we'll be organizing our second annual catathon, which is like a hackathon, but computer aided design. Um, just a little plug for that. <laughs> um, but so things like that, um, that's something that you don't normally see in first Lego League teams, but it's something to think about for FTC. So FTC does function more like a business in that people specialize, work on different parts, including community outreach for the bigger um, group of people in the, yeah. I, I, want to as well. I just wanted to add if you want more details or um, have like specific questions as you like start working with the FTC team, just shoot us an email, we'll be happy to help. Yeah, we'd also be completely um, open to actually meeting with your team. Um, so if you email us or um, well, any way of contacting us, we'd be able to find a time to meet with your team and discuss that. Um, we have a few other members who have also done FTC. We've men mentored teams in the past. And we'd love to talk about that, especially with that transition into FTC. Yeah, great. Sounds like FTC is more fun than FIL. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit <laughs> different, but I, I also do enjoy FTC more. Yeah, I think it's a different kind of fun. And, and certainly it's uh, FTC is a very good transition um, uh, program. Uh, so it is designed for students from basically grade seven through 12. Um, so it, especially if you've been working with uh, with uh, students that uh, have have done FLL for you know several years in elementary school, uh, this is a really nice program for them to transition from FLL into FTC, and then maybe in the future FRC, first robotics competition as well. So it's a uh, it's a nice continuum that uh, that first has there. But uh, yeah, I would uh, I would encourage you, uh, as Isabella said, that you can certainly contact our team, but. Uh, We've got lots of information on the FIRST website um, and FIRST Canada website as well on uh, on FTC as well. So, Yeah, we are planning to go to this way. Oh, by the way, I, I come in later. I, I didn't get the uh, contact information uh, from chat. Could you resend to the chat? Yeah, I can send it again, but also just for everyone that might be watching the recording and can't see this chat, um, we have an Instagram, um, FTC Vertex, and um, our email is vertex15534 at gmail.com. And we also have a website um, where you can find more information, ftcvertex.com. Thank you for sure. We're gonna reach out to ask you guys help. Great, <laughs> we'd love to. Thank you. That's great. Well, thank you very much for that question. And uh, thank you, uh, um, team 15534 for uh, uh, that very comprehensive uh, answer uh, and unfortunately we've run out of time it's eight o'clock here and uh and so we'd uh i'll have to bid adieu for to everyone and thank you very much for being part of this and thank you um for this wonderful presentation it was great to hear from you